Paula Scheuer, and welcome to my virtual book tour, where I teach you mouth-watering recipes without actually serving them to you. But virtual does have its benefits. I have taught over 160 virtual cooking classes to date, and I could never have done that in person. Today I'm going to talk about two great recipes from the Instant Pot Kosher Cookbook. Thank you for joining me today from my kitchen in Chevy Chase, Maryland. People have told me that I'm good under pressure, so it made sense that I would write the first officially endorsed Kosher Instant Pot cookbook. But I was kind of late to the Instant Pot world. And after fans hounded me for Instant Pot recipes, I finally got one. I used to maybe three times. I made rice, I made short ribs, and split pea soup. And I could not get over how smooth and creamy the split pea soup was. So. I was told by somebody about a Kosher Instant Pot Facebook group. Now back then they had 8,700 members and I thought, wow, that's a lot of people. But I read through the feed to get ideas for recipes and what I saw was people's frustration that so many of the recipes were not already adapted for a kosher lifestyle. So I decided to write a cookbook. That Facebook group now has 14,800 members. So what I learned from this experience is that sometimes you have to fake it until you make it. And I started from zero and became an expert, so you can too. So the first recipe we're gonna to make today is a vegan white bean and wheat stew. Everybody needs to have in their arsenal a recipe that you can make if a vegetarian just shows up or if you find out pretty quickly before dinner when you're having guests that you have to feed a vegetarian. Because if you have canned beans, you can always make some kind of a great recipe. Now, I'm using an eight quart Instant Pot here. I'll be using my six quart for our Moroccan carrot recipe, which I'll make second. So what I started was push pressing the saute button. The saute feature is fabulous, so we're gonna get started right away. Now what's great about the device, unlike the stove top, is it tells you when it's hot. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And notice that I use a great squirt bottle because it makes it so easy to measure, and I use so much olive oil. So I've got leeks cut into about, I don't know, three quarter inch pieces, some onions, and, and shallots. And I'm gonna go ahead and start sauteing those. And I'm gonna cook these for about three minutes. Now, what's your favorite tool in the kitchen? Because mine is some kind of silicone or wooden spatula. This one has both. I think silicone spatulas are even greater than stretch denim, which is my like second favorite invention in the world. So this is gonna saute for a few minutes. I'm just gonna make sure you have it's on high for saute. So this is what distinguishes an Instant Pot from a crock pot. You can't sear and brown meat and chicken and ground beef and even salmon in the recipe. And I use it to saute all of my aromatics, which is super, super great. All right, so while that is sitting there, I'm gonna go ahead and get, I've got three cloves of garlic here. I'm gonna roughly chop those. This is a great way to teach any young person to chop. I teach a lot of children's cooking classes and during the pandemic, I have been teaching a lot of teenagers in classes where they make dinner for their family. And this is such a great way to teach people to chop because their fingers are nowhere near the blade and you can keep your fingers safe. So our next step after we saute our aromatics here, we're gonna add this garlic, and we're going to add a bay leaf. This is like beautiful fresh thyme leaves, and some finely chopped rosemary. We'll be able to take the leaf and the, the stems of this out later. Let's take a look and see how this is doing. And we just want that to soften up a little bit. I've got my drained beans over here. I end up using cannellini and small white beans because that's what I found in the cabinet. And, um, all right, so let's just wait for this. We've got our other ingredients ready to go. We're gonna be adding some a quarter teaspoon of salt and pepper to this, and I've got a cup of vegetable stock. And after we add the garlic, we're only gonna cook it for about one minute or so. We don't wanna brown these aromatics. We really just wanna soften them up. Now this recipe only cooks for one minute, which means that, you know, it cooks pretty quickly, but this is the important thing to know about Instant Pot cooking. The cook time is not the full amount of time you have to account for. It's 
takes time for the device to come to pressure, which is something I didn't know when I first got the device. The recipe would say cook for five minutes, but then it would take 12 minutes to come to pressure. People need to plan. So what I did in the Instapot Kosher Cookbook was basically say on every recipe what prep time takes, approximate time to pressure, and then cook time so that you know at the beginning of a recipe what you're going to need to do. All right, these look nice and soft. Let me kind of show you this, not too hot yet. So it's just sauteing these in here. You can see it's nice and steamy. And you would, you would, if you were making this recipe in the stovetop, you would do the same thing. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add my finely chopped rosemary, my basil and my thyme. And I'm gonna add all this nice garlic here. We're just gonna cook this for one minute more. Now what's really important when you are using an Instant Pot and you saute anything is you have to deglaze the pan, which people do after we saute this garlic for a minute. What's so wonderful about this device is like everything is in one place so that at the end we're just going to have to wash one pot for this recipe. We are going to use our food processor to make a pesto to add to it, but that just pumps up the flavor so very much. All right, so in about 20 seconds or so, I'm going to add one cup of vegetable stock that I have right here. You can use homemade vegetable stock. One of the reasons I like the A quart is because I made huge amounts of chicken stock and vegetable stock, and my stocks have really strong flavor made in the Instant Pot because all the flavor is locked into it. You know, basically what drew me to this device in the first place were soups and stews, like ultimate comfort food. And if there was ever a time that we all need comfort food, it's now. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my stock. I'm just gonna bubble off a bit, and I'm gonna use my wooden spatula here. These are really fun, I got these spatulas. They say a hashtag Paula under pressure, my little Instagram personal hashtag. And what you wanna do, and this will be for any recipe, if you're browning meat or chicken, is you wanna just scrape the bottom and make sure that nothing is stuck before we add in our other ingredients. Nothing is nice, it's nothing stuck here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press cancel. All right, now let's get ready to go here. So we are going to next add our, we're gonna add our beans, we're gonna add salt and pepper. So these are nice drained and rinsed beans. And I don't cook with a lot of salt and pepper, I'd rather add it at the end. So I'm just gonna start with like a quarter teaspoon of each. And one of the tips I tell everybody, I don't care what an expert chef you are, even if you're making something you've made a zillion times, keep the recipe next to you. Keep going back to the recipe. Your recipe is your checklist to make sure you haven't forgotten any ingredients. So I'm double checking here. I'm just gonna stir this up here. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like inside. And all we needed, like one cup of stock. Okay, so here's what it looks like inside. Okay, so now, I'm gonna put my cover on. On this model, I don't have to turn the handle to, um, to sealing, it automatically seals. And I'm now gonna push pressure cook, literally for one minute. It's gonna take about 15 minutes to come to pressure. Here, I can turn this around here so you guys can see this a little bit. And you can see kind of, now it's on. What's really cool about this particular model is that it has a little thing here that tells you like as it's coming to pressure, it kind of goes up and down. Okay, um, we're going to add, oops, I forgot a bean. Until it seals, you can still open it up. There we go. Okay, the recipe has collard greens. I'm using some, some kale in about one and a half inch pieces. We're gonna add those at the end, okay? All right, so we'll add our salt and paper for pepper for later. Okay, so we are now gonna move into making our pesto, which is kind of like a garnish for the, for the stew, but it really pumps up the flavor. So you want, you're gonna want a food processor for this. You're gonna start with adding your garlic. It's just one clove of garlic. And these like really, I'm using kind of, kind of full almonds here. And we're gonna chop these up into very small pieces. And you know, we're gonna make the pesto out of parsley, but you can make pesto out of any greens. You can use arugula, spinach, you know, cilantro, whatever you happen to have.
And here we go. Small pieces. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to talk over a food processor. I've learned that from television. All right, most important, silicone spatula. I told you, my favorite tool. I'm just going to scrape down the sides of it here so that everything gets into our pesto. go ahead and I'm going to add my Italian parsley. And I'll process this into it in really small pieces. which is such a great recipe. And like the magic of making like cooked salad recipes, and I do a lot of those kinds of recipes in the book. I have an eggplant salad, pizza, you know, hummus, is that you can make them like two days in advance before a meal. They are traditionally served on Friday night or before any big meal as a first course. So you can serve lots of salads. And what's really nice about many of those salads I'll usually serve like the dips with challah and then have the carrot salad and a couple of other things, sometimes a pepper salad. So it's a really nice way to uh, start a meal. But the best thing about it is that you can make it in advance. I'm a huge fan of anything that you can either make it in advance or you can serve at room temperature. Like what is your, your biggest challenge in the kitchen? Because mine is keeping everything warm. Think about like Thanksgiving and, and like trying to heat up all the side dishes at the same time. So by having dishes that you can serve at room temperature, it just like takes all the stress off. I have a whole bunch of those in the Healthy Jewish Kitchen, which many of you know about before from the last event I did for Melissa's Produce. And I have cauliflower, broccoli, and, and recipes that you make like a day or two in advance and you just take them out of the fridge like an hour before you're serving them and that's it. You don't have to like stress about warming them up. All right, so I'm gonna leave our pesto over here. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and get our carrots over here. And we're gonna get ready to make our Moroccan carrot salad. So this recipe was one that I learned on a family trip to Morocco two years ago. I think pretty sure it was, uh, no, it was like 2018 we went. It was that December vacation. And my friend who's a travel agent who organized the trip arranged for us to do, let me see if this comes to pressure yet, nope a family cooking class right outside of Marrakesh. And even better, she got us kosher meat and lamb to do, kosher chicken and lamb to make the recipes, which was really great. So we got to learn like wonderful, wonderful recipes. All right, I'm gonna go grab my other instant pot right here. Now this one is a six quart. 
The six squirt is basically my workhorse. Every recipe in the cookbook was tested in the six quart, not necessarily eight quart. And I know people, oh, there you go. Oh, it's, okay, so now it's come to pressure. It's gonna cook for one minute. So let's wait on this for a second. So after it cooks for one minute, okay, we're gonna do what is called a quick release. Now there are two ways to release the pressure in this pressure cooker, this electric pressure cooker, which are unlike the ones of the past. Number one is we do a quick release where I'm gonna press this button and you're gonna see steam go up out of the device and it'll quickly reduce the pressure. Slow release when, is when you finish cooking something and then you leave it alone. And it, after it counts down the amount of minutes for cooking time, it starts counting up time where it slowly reduces the pressure. On the Instapot model, it goes directly to warm. So like, let's say you're making a soup and you go out or go take a walk and come back a little later, it'll just go on warm, it'll slowly reduce pressure and keep your food warm. So we're gonna let it stay to warm. Okay, so now this is on zero. This is really important. Okay, one, you do not wanna push this button and have the steam hit your cabinets, glass light fixtures, or any part of your body. So, since this model, this is the button's over here now. There you go. It's kind of crazy, I don't know if you can hear me over it, but let's do a quickly release the pressure here. And I'm going to get all my ingredients ready for my carrot. cheesecake, a flan, powder crab, 
on top of the rack and have water underneath and cook it like you would in a water bath in the oven, which is really great. This is a little bit less than a cup, so I'm going to get a little bit more just to be extra careful. So I'm going to pour in a cup of water here, and the carrots are just going to steam, okay? So I'm going to take these carrots. All I did with these carrots was I just peeled them and trimmed them, and I'm literally throwing them on top of our little rack here. If they don't fit in, I guess I will cut this one in half. It's a little bigger than I would like. So make sure they can also actually sit on top of the rack. I'm going to put the thick ones at the bottom, so let's go ahead and do that first. Always put thicker things on the bottom. When you make chicken in the Instabot, you should put dark meat at the bottom because it takes longer to cook than white meat. Okay, I'll put all the skinnier ones on top. Beautiful. There we go. Okay, so these are just piled on top. I'm just going to bring this over here so you can see that. And let's go ahead and start steaming these. Let's get the cover. lock this up. I, and this model, it has a steam release handle that you can turn from venting to sealing. So I'm going to turn it here to sealing. And I'm going to push pressure. And this only is going to cook for two minutes. See, I picked recipes that were super, super fast to really show you like how much you can do in a short amount of time. Okay, great. Let me move these out of the way. And while those are cooking, you can get your ingredients ready for the dressing. I'm just going to chop up our, so one thing I had not done yet was cilantro leaves. Once again, if you are, don't have cilantro, you could use parsley, you could use basil. And this is my favorite way to chop up herbs. I just go like this. Let's keep an eye on here. Five minutes, okay, three more minutes. And then our stew will be done. One of my favorite uses for the rack in the Instant Pot is I make a, an Indian dal where you make the stew at the bottom of the pot, you put the rack, and then you take a pan, like a six inch round kind of baking pan, I put in rice and water, put it on top of the rack, seal up the top, and after the cooking time is complete, you have your stew and your rice, so you have a whole meal together. I have another recipe like that in the book. It's a spaghetti bolognese where you saute the sauce, then you wet spaghetti, break it into pieces, throw it in the pot, sauce, water, close up the top, and you cook them both together. And when it's done, you can just stir your pasta into your sauce. So I've had a lot of fun getting to know the Instant Pot. I'm not going to make this too, um, too small. I kind of rough, doing roughly, roughly chop this, and this is ready to go. All right, let's move this out of the way. And now we're going to get ingredients ready to make our dressing for our Moroccan carrots, okay? Now, this may be a little different than you may have made Moroccan carrots before. This is how I learned how to make it in Morocco. So, you know, you can't argue with that, right? So, first we're going to take our olive oil. And we're going to take garlic. We're going to crush garlic and put it into the small bowl as well. So I've got three beautiful cloves of garlic. You all are serious cooks, so I'm sure you guys know that if a recipe says a clove of garlic and your clove is really small, you should use two of them. So I feel like the Instant Pot is just great for, like, for everyone, but it makes so many like classic Jewish food that I really, really love. And it's, um, you know, I make great chicken soup and matzo balls and stuffed cabbage. I also make really good um, Israeli recipes. I make hummus. I make shakshuka, shawarma. So I'm just going to take the garlic and the olive oil. I'm going to mix, put it together in a small bowl. And we're basically going to let that infuse while everything else is getting ready. So just super simple, right? Like just take your spoon and kind of smush the garlic into the olive oil. Smushing is a very sophisticated cooking technique I learned in France. So we're just going to let that sit and we're going to strain that later. So let's put this aside. And then you're going to get out your mixing bowl, okay? And in this mixing bowl, I'm going to put in my fresh lemon juice. I keep a jar in my fridge with lemon juice because I use it all the time. So I've got lemon juice here. And I'm going to add cumin to it. 
I'm gonna add some more salt, add pepper. I'm adding a half a teaspoon this time, yep. So half a teaspoon, what was a one and a half of cumin, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ground pepper. Now I know a lot of people make this really spicy, so you could always add harissa to it if you wanted to. Cumin, salt, pepper, and lemon juice. Exactly, I'm gonna take a whisk. And I'm gonna mix this all up together, and this is just gonna sit here waiting for our carrots to cook. All right, we're probably done with our stew at this point. All right, so now that we've got our lemon juice, our, our cumin is there. And now we're just gonna wait for this to come to pressure, which shouldn't take too long. Usually if you're cooking for something, like with the water steaming, it's gonna come to pressure pretty quickly. Okay, so now we're done here. Remember, we don't, we, this wasn't at pressure anymore. Let me stir this up. All right. I'm going to take this out so you guys can see this better. Hold on. I wonder where everybody is joining me from. I may be the only East Coast person. And I'm going to go ahead and get our Instant Pot out of the way. These are really fun little toys. I'm hopefully going to be doing a giveaway soon on my Instagram at Kosher Baker of various Instant Pot recipes. And then I'll show you quickly how we stir this. Let's see, the cow needs another minute or so to soften up. You know, there's nature for it, but you can see what's in there. I'm going to let this sit in the pot another minute or so, and I'm going to get a serving bowl, and I'll show you how you can serve this. Very, I'm very excited to have made this recipe. This is going to be my dinner for tonight. All right, so we're still waiting for that to come to pressure. And then when it's done, we're just going to strain the oil into the pan. We're going to cut up the carrots. I'll explain how we do that. And let's put our part of the intro in a bowl so that I have my cutting board ready to go for my carrot, to chop up my carrots. Here. And obviously, like you can always add more or less parsley if you want, add more salt. And if, another way to make it spicy, you could add red pepper flakes to this mixture too. All right, we're gonna let that sit for a minute. We're gonna wait for this to come to pressure. Then, after the carrots cook, I'm gonna quickly put them into a colander in the sink, let them drain, and put them on a clean dish towel to dry before I show you how to cut them, which was completely different from what I was used to in. Um, in doing the, um, in doing mac and carrots forever, everybody always told me to do them like circles or cut them in like uh, half moons, but you'll see the way we do it, it's kind of fun. All right, so while we're waiting for that, um, let's, I wanna talk about the book a little bit. So, you know, what I tried to do in this cookbook, like I've done in all of my cookbooks, was bridge, you know, kind of bridge generation. I mentioned already about some of the traditional Jewish recipes I like to make in the cookbook. I like to make, adapted for the Instant Pot. Jewish immigrants came from different countries, moved other places. They had their recipes in their heads. They had to get to know new tools and new kitchen equipment and appliances. So taking something completely modern, adapting traditional recipes, there's a long tradition for that. Now, all of us have a food story to tell, and we all have to be deliberate about sharing that food story with another generation. And we can do that through the food we serve at our tables. Now, when I talk about a food story, I mean meals that you had maybe growing up at your parents or grandparents or an aunt's table, maybe food that you tasted during your travels, maybe it was the first time you cooked meals for friends in college or grad school when you had your first apartment, food you served your, your children or grandchildren, all of those kind of meals and culinary experiences become part of your own personal food story. And like for me, every time I have a bite of a chocolate fudge cake, I think about my mother who used to hide a chocolate Entenmann's fudge cake in her bedroom closet. We had one in the kitchen, but she had her own all for herself, you know? So we all have like these like associations with food. And my own food story is that when I was 12, I would sit in my grandmother's kitchen in Brooklyn, measuring cake, watch her measure cake ingredients with her hands. My own mother didn't bake, so it was like a really big deal to spend time with grandma and watch her make like classic Jewish comfort food, rugelach, drowning in powdered sugar, teeny tiny little meatballs, and 
And until I was 30 years old, I didn't even think that food was a career. I mean, it's still remarkable to me that I did this. I practiced law for six years before I went to cooking school just for fun and then started a whole new career. First catering, then teaching, now writing, and now here I am back to teaching again in this new virtual world. And, you know, I was, um, I had only gone to cooking school, right, really just to bake better, but then ended up doing dessert books and food books. The Kosher Baker came out in 2010, then the Holiday Kosher Baker, my Passover cookbook, my healthy book, and now this book. And um, I feel really proud of them. And I tried so hard in all of my books, increasingly, to take out as much sugar, salt, and fat as I could to stand in the shoes of home cooks and think about how many steps they want to take in a recipe, how many dishes they want to wash at the end, and really respect the fact that every home cook is making just one recipe for me among other recipes they're making for an entire meal. I don't want to take up all of their time. So just like in normal times, we have old and young people at our tables and people are beginning to do that again. I encourage everyone to have old and young recipes at the table. Pick a recipe that tells your food story. And then add a new recipe from me, something you can find online, something, a recipe a friend shares with you, and kind of bring those two food experiences to the table. And even if nobody is there, you should enjoy the food memories. And if people are there, like share with them that experience. So this is steaming a little bit, so I know that this is coming very quickly to pressure. And then it's going to cook really, really fast. Um, other recipes I love from my book is I have this beet and quinoa salad which is on the cover, where you actually cook the beets and the quinoa at the same time in the Instant Pot. It uses less water than you would on the stove top. And then you add walnuts and green onions and lemon juice. It's a great side with any protein, or it's a vegan main course. Just love, love that recipe. I have spinach pesto brisket, which I had fun with. No, the brisket doesn't fit. You have to cut it in half. Um, chicken shawarma is one that I loved. I've been doing Israeli dinner classes, and I, and I just started partnering with Air Subs, offering a whole bunch of virtual cooking classes and a cooking club, because I believe that virtual is going to continue, and I'm continuing to schedule classes. So my Israeli dinner class, we make pita, and trina and salad is a really, really fun one. Um, so as you see, like, yes, I'm checking on it because we're in a class, but the magic of it is that you really don't have to always think about it. The Instant Pots are really great for people in their 20s, people in small apartments who don't want to have to buy so many different tools. I have four children in their 20s. They use it for rice. They use it for soups. They take frozen chicken and meat out of the freezer and throw it in with a whole bunch of other junk from their fridge they're trying to get rid of. So I feel like I've taught them well. They know how to forage in the kitchen to, to find ingredients to make different recipes. And it uses less energy, so it's like better for the environment, which is really wonderful. And um, and there you go. Okay, this should be ready in a moment. So, you know, one of the things that I thought about like two years ago when I was writing this book is like, what am I going to talk about on this book tour? I have so many. I have a story associated with each one of my cookbooks, and I thought two years ago I would talk about all of the pressure people are under. That was two years ago. Little did I know. So, oops, see, we've come to pressure. See, it says two minutes. Now it's going to count down to one. And at one, we're going to do another quick release. I will stand away from that. And then we're going to put this all together. The Moroccan carrot salad is one you should definitely make in advance because it tastes better if it sits around and everything has to marinate a little bit. But I'm going to quickly take the stew out of our pot so you guys can see it better. So this will be ready in a minute. So 
Remember we use the saute function for the stew. You know, one of the things that I really started thinking about is, um, well, again, okay, we'll do it this way. I want everybody on, watching this to imagine that you're a carrot being thrown into an Instant Pot on the saute function. So you're thrown in, you immediately feel the shock of the heat, but you look around, there's some other vegetables, so you realize, okay, I'll, I'm, I'm not alone. But then, more ingredients, and liquid is dumped in, and you're basically drowning. And then, the top is sealed, and the pressure starts building up, building up, building up, and you are trapped inside that pot. Now, because it's the Instapot, it doesn't cook for very long, the cooking time's complete, somebody releases the pressure, and eventually like opens up the top and you can like plan your escape. So I realized that kind of at its best during COVID or all under the warm setting, right? Like adjusting to a new normal, it's kind of warm all the time. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes hotter, but like we've had to adjust to that kind of new normal. But at its worst, we're being fully pressure cooked and like just like how we have all felt being stuck at home so much over the last year, you know, sometimes we have to let off some speed. All right, so our cooking time is done here. I'm gonna quickly turn this to venting. Whoops, hold on, why is it not doing that? Oh, hold on. I don't know why something's weird's happening. All right, I'm just gonna hold it for a second. For some reason, it's like wobbling. All right, here we go. Something must have gotten stuck under there. But you see, I'm keeping my hand far away from here. I don't know why this happened, but we're going to release the pressure there. And then I will assemble the carrot salad. Usually you just turn it and it releases pressure. So I don't know what happened here. I feel like something must be stuck underneath. Now, everyone's going to have different sized carrots. So if you open up the top and you stick a fork in the carrots and the carrots are really, really hard, you could always put it on to cook for another minute, but you shouldn't have to do that. We're not looking for soft carrots. We want them to be have a little bit of a crunch. I grew up with vegetables from a can, so trust me, I'm always, I always want to keep my vegetables crunchy. All right, so let's just wait until the, I can open up the top. Hold on. This is interesting. Hold on. Oh, I'm just, oh there we go, because I turned it the wrong way. direction there you go so maybe hold on I know I sailed it before I think that's why but I, I turned in the wrong direction okay so I'm just waiting for the silver pin to come down there are lots of great accessories for the instapod you can get a steamer basket to steam vegetables but I don't steam vegetables this is two minutes this is at most I'm gonna get a fork out so I can show you that it's you know it's pork tender and you know what I'm so used to doing it opposite which is why I think I got confused about the handle but there you go it says venting and steaming you really can't mix up it, mess it up. And the other thing I did in the book was, in every recipe, I tell you what buttons to push. Like, I don't assume that you're going to read the front of the book and figure out the instructions. So many of us don't do that. I wanted every recipe to stand on its own so that everybody would feel like they could become really good at this recipe. At this. Okay. Oh, there we go. So, pins down. All right. So, I'm going to quickly check my carrots. Yeah, I can stick a fork in. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take these out, put them in the colander, rinse cold water on to stop the cooking and cool them off. And then I will dry them and bring them over to cut up the small pieces. Always be careful. Always use oven to steam. It's even worse.
like this. So the recipe that we learned in Morocco, we cut them into little cubes versus, okay, so let me just tell you exactly what the amount, so I do like half to three quarter inch cubes. I'm gonna move this out of the way for us. So I've got more space here. All right, here we go. So basically, I'm gonna cut them kind of down the long way like this. I cut them in half, and then if I need to cut them again, I will, but I think I'll cut them smaller. Here, I'm gonna cut a bunch at the same time, like this. This is what I do with every, every recipe. Okay, these are a little bit warm, but you guys get the idea that you're gonna let them cool off, okay? These came out perfect, I'm so excited. All right, so I'm just gonna cut them into like little pieces. I'm trying not to touch them because they're really warm. It's a little, yeah, there we go. All right, so you're gonna cut up all these carrots into these little cubes, and then we will put this all together. And I hope you guys will make these two recipes from the book. You guys have the book. I hope you really will enjoy the recipes in it. I tried to make sure that there were week, weekday as well as holiday recipes. And I use a lot of fresh ingredients because I really, really try hard in my cooking to avoid processed products and jarred ingredients if I can. All right, so I've got our little cubes here. But you guys get the idea. I'll do one more to show you. Obviously, if you have thicker carrots, you'll know how long to cook them for. All right, so now I'm gonna put all these carrots into this kind of the lemon juice and cumin and salt and pepper. All right, let me do one more carrot so that it looks the way it's supposed to. But know that there'll be more carrots in there. And they're not soft, like they definitely are just for tender. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a strainer and I'm gonna put my garlic here. Now the way I've always made this for years is that we would always keep the garlic in, but this is how they are chef taught us. I don't mind if a little bit of garlic goes in there and then I'm gonna mix this whole thing up. And I'm gonna add my cilantro. And you have this beautiful side dish or meze, served at room temperature with these beautiful carrots. So here we have my fabulous dinner for tonight, Moroccan carrot salad and my white bean and leek stew with a parsley pesto. I've got a bowl here ready so I can start eating it right now. You can find out more information about me at thekosherbaker.com, my website. There's also a blog posting there that tells you how you can adapt the recipes you love to make them in your Instant Pot. Instagram is at kosherbaker. And I wanna leave you with a final thought. Most of you will know the famous Freddie Mercury, David Bowie song, Under Pressure. And I went back to look at the lyrics of that song, and basically it says, pressure pushing down on me. And they describe, pressure as being the terror of knowing what the world is about, watching some good friends screaming, let me out. Couldn't believe that those were the lyrics of the song as we got in 2020. Now the song ultimately asks, can't we give ourselves one more chance? Why can't we give love that one more chance? So with the Instant Pot, you know, fast food finally means something nourishing and comforting. And you can make in this device the kind of food that you can share with other people to comfort, to soothe, and to celebrate. And I feel like food is how we can give love a chance. And that is where the healing begins. Thank you.